In fact, it's very interesting that we have no account of a place called Nazareth. Nazareth, as far as we know, we have no accounts of a town or a place called Nazareth. And of course, it might be anyone who knows the story of Jesus, okay, knows that he's supposed to be Jesus of Nazareth. But interestingly enough, when they search for Nazareth, it exists now, but then it didn't. And it's quite extraordinary that it doesn't. But however, this term Nazarene does, a zealot for the law. And then a very interesting thing happened recently. They discover the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now this is something we could talk a lot about. But essentially what they found when they discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls was a community of people who were establishing obedience to God, the law of God, and they were zealots for the law and they were ready to fight, to fight the Roman occupiers. This is what they were ready to do. And it seems that there is plenty of evidence that these, in fact, themselves were the early Christians. They themselves were the early Christians. And it's interesting that in these texts, it talks about a liar. A man who used to be from the community and then caused a great blasphemy. And he left the community and he started calling people to a false way. And he claimed that he was following the righteous teacher, but he was not following the righteous teacher. And he had abandoned the way. And in fact, they were trying to assassinate this man. It seems as if, in fact, when we look deeper and deeper, this man is non no one else except Paul himself. So imagine. Imagine it. Imagine it. What a better way to divert people's attention. You have this prophet, this messiah, you have this man going round, and people believe he is the anointed one, the expected one, the righteous teacher, the one who has come to liberate them, to establish the kingdom of God and the law of God. And he is teaching this message to call the people to fight against and overthrow the Romans, the pagans, and establish God's kingdom. You have the jealous priests who want to get rid of him. And you have the Romans to whom, of course, this man is a big trouble maker. There are two effective ways to deal with this problem. Number one, from the point of view of the priests, the best way to deal with this is crucify him. Why crucify him? Why not just kill him? Why not throw him over a cliff? Why not drown him? Why not something else? No, crucify particularly. And the reason is, is because... Their book says that whoever is hung upon a tree is cursed. And it's interesting that Paul mentions in the Acts of the Apostles, where in one of his letters, he says the crucifixion is a stumbling block for the Jews. And in fact, even today, Jews laugh at Christians. They laugh at Christians. They laugh at Christians because they say, you say that Jesus is the Messiah, and he was crucified, and it's a big joke. You might as well roll over laughing. Because they know that God, you cannot crucify God's Messiah. Because the one who is hung on a tree is cursed. And how could God curse his chosen Messiah? It's a contradiction in terms. In fact, Paul himself tries to explain that. He says Jesus was cursed to take the curse away from us. That's his explanation. Jesus, in fact, he says was cursed to take the curse away from us and put it onto him. That's his explanation for it. But it's very interesting. That's why they wanted him crucified. They tried to crucify him. And Allah says in the Quran that that's what they tried to do. They tried to kill him and they tried to crucify him. But Allah did not, God did not let that happen. Because Jesus is, he is the Messiah. He is the one who has come to establish the kingdom of God. And there is a fascinating thing that they discovered in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And even Paul, he's on the road to Damascus. Why is Paul on the road to Damascus? And why does Paul go to Arabia for three years? And if you look at the Dead Sea Scrolls and the community, they're always talking about Damascus. Actually, every single Muslim knows the answer to that. Because where will Jesus descend? His shoulders resting on two angels. In a white minaret in the east of Damascus. Every Muslim knows that Jesus is going to come again. 
Every Muslim knows that Jesus will come and he will fight the Antichrist, who will claim that he is the Lord. And he will call people to follow his false religion. And that Jesus will defeat the Antichrist and kill him. And Jesus will break the cross and he will kill the pig. The cross is the symbol of the false religion attributed to Jesus. And the pig is the symbol of their abandonment of the law. So he will break the cross and kill the pig. And in Arabia, who is in Arabia? And what is in Arabia? Huh? That Paul, why would you think Paul might think to go to Arabia and then go to Damascus? Huh? Because Jesus told them that the prophet would come from Arabia. That the last prophet, the last messenger would come from Arabia. We know from the time, we know from accounts of Salman al-Farsi, Salman the Persian, we know from his story that when he was with in the Christians in Sham, they described exactly the bishops that he used to study with. And there were very few of them. As there few bishops left, few people following the true Christianity, the true message of Jesus. And the last one said, when he said, who am I going to study with now? Who am I going to go? He said, there's no one left. No one left following the original teachings of Jesus. But soon, a time will come when the arrival of the final prophet will shade you. And then he described exactly to Salman the Persian the description of what this place looked like where the Prophet Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings, this final prophet would come. And he described what this prophet would be like. And of course it is in Arabia. It is in Arabia. So what we find is, first of all, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the people in collusion with the Romans, and not all the Pharisees by the way, absolutely, but I want to get into that. They wanted him crucified. That's what they wanted, at least to appear, because then they could say, he can't be your Messiah. You see, we crucified him. And then the second thing, and the very clever and cunning thing, and watch out for this brothers and sisters, is spread a false religion. Bits and pieces of the true message but mixed up with falsehood. Mix the truth with the falsehood. So instead of a religion that tells you, you have to implement the Sharia, you have to implement the law of God, you have to obey Allah, and we must establish Allah's law upon the earth. No. It is a religion of faith alone. That Jesus has died for your sins. That His crucifixion was a means through which and by which your sins can be atoned. And see how similar it is to the pagan religions, Mithraism, Baalism and all those other mystery cults, a, de a birth at December, a death in Easter, resurrection, blood sacrifice, something they were all very used to, something that they could easily accept. And so they exaggerated in praising Jesus, they imitated the pagans of old, and they spread this false message that came to be what we now call today Christianity. In fact, it is very interesting when we study the history. What we find is not so much that Christianity converted the world or converted the Western Europe. It's in fact more like Western Europe paganized Christianity. They made Christianity into a a mirror image of the ancient pagan cults, right down to a man-god. And there could not be a bigger blasphemy. There couldn't be a bigger contradiction to any true, obedient worshipper of God than the concept that a man is God. The concept that a man is God is the whole thing that these people have been fighting, and every Muslim has been fighting since Adam, Nuh, Ibrahim, and all the prophets, including Jesus himself. The concept that God becomes a man. It is the very opposite of monotheism. And that is the very essence of paganism. This, my brothers and sisters, I hope, is a historical, insightful, thoughtful look into the passion of Jesus as who we to believe to be Isa ibn Maryam, the messenger of Allah. And may Allah's peace and blessings be on all his messengers and his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.